Hi, welcome to chapter 16, Capital Gains Tax. This is for individuals. Capital Gains Tax is paid by individuals on chargeable disposals of chargeable assets. Why do we emphasize chargeable disposals of chargeable assets? Well, because not everything is chargeable. We'll come to that. Companies do not pay capital gains tax. They pay corporation tax on their profits chargeable. Okay. This chapter only deals with individuals. So we're now going to look at individuals rather than companies as we did in chapter, I think it was 14. Only individuals that are UK resident or UK ordinarily resident will pay capital gains tax. The asset is supposed of can, however, be located anywhere in the world. So it's not just about UK assets owned in UK country. Individuals have a CT and exemption 10,600. Gains up to this amount are not taxed, they are tax free. Capital gains are taxed after taxable income. Now what you have to do is you have to work out whether somebody's got a lower rate, 20% tax income tax rate, because if they have, then the taxable gains are 18%. If someone has now gone into the 40% band or 50, their taxable gains will be taxed at 28%. If an individual is neither UK tax resident nor UK ordinary resident, then they will not be liable to capital gains tax, even if the asset disposed of is located in the UK. The majority of capital assets are chargeable to capital gains tax. There are some exemptions which are always given in the exam just to see if you've remembered them, so here we go. Principal private residence, the home that you live in, is not taxable in the UK. So, as long as it's a capital gain, and not like um, trading in building houses, which would be under the badge of trade, uh, a trade receipt, and taxed accordingly. Cars are not included to be taxed. Certain chattels, now chattels are your your, your properties, your possessions, it's a, a legal word. National savings certificates, that's something given by the government. If you want to save with the government, the interest rate may not be quite so good, but at least it's um, not taxable when you sell the, the item. And any assets held within individual saving accounts, they're not capital gains taxable. What's the pro forma for computations for individuals? slightly different to companies it's probably a good idea to go back and compare this example to the one we had in the other chapter for a company so disposal proceeds just the same incidental cost disposal just the same that gives you net proceeds just as before less allowable expenditure just as before 28 cost of enhancement those sort of things gives you a capital gain loss Notice there's no indexation. The gains and losses for an individual are then combined and taxed. So what, you, what it means by this is, if you have a gain, 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 that gives you 35. Knock off the capital loss brought forward if there is one. Gives you a net capital gain of 30,000. Less annual exemption, 10,600. If you had a 30,000 loss on item number four, that unfortunately would go in here and wipe away your capital out, uh, your annual exemption. Please, however, note the capital losses brought forward are only used to the extent of bringing the net gain for the current year down to the level of the annual exemption. In other words, you don't lose it, which is quite nice. Please note tra transfers between husbands and wife are not deemed to be a transfer at value so therefore there's no gain no loss so you can't make a profit or loss on selling to your husband or your wife because the reason why is that the spouse transferring the asset is deemed to have transferred it at the original acquisition cost 
plus an uplift. Okay. And then when the second put spouse does sell to an external party, they will inherit the original cost and details of the acquisition from the original spouse. Another capital gains that always likes to come in questions and exams is when you just part dispose of an asset. How can you do that? Well, it is possible. If you have tables and chairs, a nice dining room table and chairs, and decide to sell off three of the chairs, leaving the other eight, um, you'd have to you'd have a part disposal. So some things can be bought. Land is the other typical example. So John bought five thousand square meters of land in January two thousand four for a hundred thousand pounds. He's just sold three thousand meters squared for eighty thousand. The market value of the remaining two thousand square meter, uh, meters is thirty thousand pounds. How do you calculate what the original cost is? Well. You must use this formula cost times A over A plus B, where A is the market value of the part sold and B is the market value of the part retained. So in our example, the cost of the part supposed example is 100,000, which is the original cost of the whole thing, times 80,000, being what you've got rid of, divided by 80,000, sorry, divided by 80,000 plus 30,000 being the value of the remaining 2,000 square meters. Okay, so there's A and there's A plus B, and that's how you must calculate. So, therefore, the original cost you take out of the original 100,000 is 72,000. 727. Chattels, as I say, are tangible movable items. Examples that will include your antiques, such as vases or paintings. Now there are special rules for chattels. These rates haven't changed since goodness knows when. Still £6,000. So if you bought something for less than 6000 it's exempt from CGT if it's sold for less than 6000 It's basically to try and keep all these different items off taxable returns. If you bought something for more than 6,000 but sell proceeds are less than 6,000 then the sell proceeds are deemed to be 6,000 okay. pounds. If however you sold for greater than 6,000 then it's CTC computation in the normal way. I proceeds minus incidental cost equals net proceeds etc. Now if it's bought for six less than six thousand but sold for just over you've got a slight problem this is the hardest bit but the only th thing is you've just got to remember a formula. The gain calculates are normal but gain limited to a maximum of five thirds times gross proceeds minus six. So you just got to put that in the plug those numbers into the formula and uh, see what you come up with. Share matching rules for individuals, well, what you need to do is when you sell a share, you need to match it in the following order. Those shares acquired on the same day, shares acquired in the next 30 days, so quite different to companies, shares in the share pool. Okay. Reliefs. Principal Private Residence Relief is available for all individuals who sell a property that has been their main residence at some stage. The gain is exempt. Um, the gain that is exempt is calculated as the gain times the period of occupation time divided by the total period of ownership. So if you live in a house all your life and then sell it, there will be no capital gains tax as an individual. Now, little quirky couple of rules. You can live in a house even when you don't actually live there because it's something called deem occupation. What deeming occupation does is it says, well, the last three years are always treated as if you live there even if you don't. As long as it was actually occupied at some stage. So it's a good idea to move into property for at least two or three days 
just to say you live there and then move on if you're going to move on because you can get used to this three year rule. Up to three years absence for any reason if preceded and followed by actual occupation. So you actually have to live in the house before and after your period of absence due to any reason, could be work, whatever. Up to four years absence if you're working elsewhere in the UK. But again, you have to be preceded and followed by actual occupation, it means you physically have to be in there. And then any period of absence if working abroad. So clearly if you're told to go and work abroad, it's not your fault and capital gains tax will not apply. Reliefs also uh, apply by something called entrepreneurs relief. Clearly in the UK you want to have people invest in your country. So entrepreneurs are allowed to have tax, no tax on the first 10 million of any gains made in a qualifying business. We'll come to qualify in a second, and the f they're going to be taxed at 10%, so not 40 or 50%, but 10%. Gains above 10 million will be taxed at the standard rate of 18 or 28%, so quite an advantage. But you need to have a qualifying business. What is a qualifying business? It's a business carried on by the individual themselves, can include partnership shares, shares in an individual's personal trading company. Okay, so you need to have a trading company. Can't basically have an investment company. Also something called rollover relief. Gosh, what's rollover relief? Well, it's when you sell an asset, any gain arising can be rolled into a replacement asset. Clearly you've got cash. It'd be nice if you reinvest in another piece of expensive buildings, factories, plant equipment. So the gain is therefore deferred by reducing the base cost of the placement asset by the gain rolled over. So if you make a 50,000 gain, that 50,000 gain can be rolled over and the base cost of the new property goes down by 50,000. So eventually the capital gains will crystallize, potentially. What's, um, it needs to be a qualifying asset. Sorry, I didn't pick up that point. It needs to be qualifying assets. Qualifying assets include land and building, goodwill, which is you know, buying or selling a business and fixed part of machinery. But there are some other rules. The placement asset must be acquired between one year in advance of the disposal and three years after the disposal. So one year before, three years after. Another little rule, if the replacement asset is a depreciating asset, in other words, it has a life of less than 60 years, the gain cannot be rolled over it's going to be deferred until the earlier of, and you just need to learn these by heart, the date the replacement asset is sold, the date the replacement asset ceases to be used, or in failing that, 10 years. If nothing else happens, it will come back to bite you. Okay, and that's um, the end of that chapter.